Uh, thanks, everyone. Actually, yeah, yeah, this is the first time I'm speaking in front of so many people. Uh, I left a small bottle of vod vodka here yesterday, just in case, but it's gone. But uh, yeah, we'll talk about it later. You will see the sign a lot in this presentation because we are going to talk about performance culture in general and uh, new opportunities that <clears throat> Embroider gave us. For a minute in a previous talk, when Ed started to talk about Embroider, I was like, okay, he's going to steal my talk. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a lot to say. And in general, performance culture, it's a wider topic, you know. Yesterday on a, <clears throat> on a panel, I mentioned about GraphQL layer that we have. Oh, we did a lot of improvements in this layer, and we did a lot of improvements in uh, rendering. But today we are going to be focused only on <coughs> bundling, on, on, on embroider, basically. Just in case, if you are wondering who is talking to you, my name is Tomek Niezurawski. I am a staff engineer at Forest. Uh, I'm from Poland, uh, hence the vodka. Uh, uh, I have a blog, tomekdev.com. Um, and I like to say that I connect humans and machines. Yeah? It doesn't help with my grandma and other relatives. They still don't know what I do. But uh, yeah, I believe there are some barriers between humans and machines. We have these fancy interfaces. And one of the bar uh, barriers could be loading time. So we are going to talk about it today. So uh, the first thing I would like to say is that, in my opinion, users don't tell you everything. And you need to remember that they have tasks to do. Most of you probably work on a business apps uh, and they won't tell you that the app is slow or it's loading slow, something like that. Most likely they will <coughs> raise a feature request, an issue, something like that. But they won't tell you unless it's very bad. That's, you know, uh, <laughs> performance is uh, slow. Uh, so. The second thing you have to remember that you are the experts, right? So it's up to you to create some opportunities, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, you have to do that uh, cultural thing in your engineering team to actually uh, care about performance. Uh, so in our case, uh, users didn't complain. At least we thought they are not, they are more or less happy with what they have. But they were not. Uh, <laughs> and, mm, from time to time, we have a chance at Forest to talk with our clients uh, by visiting a salon and working in a reception. I, I never done it because English is not my first language. Uh, so I'm always stressed that I will have to go to salon <laughs> and, you know, use our software uh, and actually deal with real customers. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> but sometimes they visit us uh, and then with a glass of a beer uh, next to us we can talk about performance uh, or something like that uh, soft, software is not their, their thing actually uh, they love cutting hair but um, yeah I managed to get some insights and they told me yeah you know the app could load faster okay so um, our challenge is that we are uh, porting the desktop app into web uh, you heard about it from Mo yesterday. It's a Java Swing application. Uh, I love that someone yesterday about legacy said that legacy is a software that uh, pays the bills or something like that. It's the, 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 the software that makes money. It's very true. Uh, but that's not only a different technology, but also a different medium. This is not Photoshop. One of our clients actually used the app in uh, Tesla. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, they sometimes have a tablet in the salon and they can use it like we have some customer facing features. Uh, I imagine they can also use it on uh, mobile. You know, there is some integration with Facebook that we have. Most of the users com um, coming from Facebook are, are on mobile these days. So even on mobile, your business app, I guess, should work, uh, should load fast. So how we compare today, I prepared a video. So on the left, we'll have the app that we are porting, and on the right is our uh, <coughs> web experience. And the loading time. Yeah, we are there with our app, uh, with our uh, web application. This is a pretty complex screen with calendar. Under two seconds, we are there. Uh, one and a mm, eight, 1.8 seconds. 
and you know Java Swing app still still loads. Uh, so <laughs> uh, there's no one uh, that writes Java here, right? I, I, I apologize. I apologize. You know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, so this is this is loading, and you know. Uh, this app makes money, it's great. Once it's loaded, it's a good experience, uh, they, they like it. So, uh, so it's, it's good. Uh, but we have to think about it also that, yeah, we are different medium. It will, it's going to be, uh, they are going to visit this, this new app from different uh, uh, sources. It's not going to be only desktop app, but also, you know, on the mobile, etc. So. So yeah, in general, it's a tricky business. I Googled a busy calendar, and this is what Google gave me. This person for sure has too many uh, meetings. Some of them are in parallel. I don't know how they do it, but uh, yeah. What we have on the screen is seven columns and 75 events, but our business is a bit trickier. This is the calendar that we have to render, and these uh, boxes are more complex. There are icons. A little JavaScript that has to calculate if all the icons um, fit in that place. Uh, a lot is happening, and uh, for a business salon like this, uh, for this example and what we have seen loading, it's 14 columns since around 400 events, so quite a lot. Uh, and they somehow expect that everything will go smooth. This is actually a night bar, I think. Uh, so not a salon, but I've seen that they actually are pretty busy in the salons as well. So uh, how do we test if the things are fast enough? First of all, we have Lighthouse and with Lighthouse, we, ch we check every change actually. So let me introduce you a concept of scenarios, I would say. Uh, so we have a login scenario and this is something to test the leaks in the bundles. In my opinion, it could be like a 404 page or sign up, login, uh, <clears throat> something small. So if anything goes to your main bundle, there is a high chance it's going to make it like big and you will see that difference on very simple screen. Uh, of course, we test that calendar as well, but we pay the penalty, I would say, for bundling Mirage uh, because we wanted to have uh, very consistent timings uh, that we measure. So the network influence is cross out, you know. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we, <laughs> the score is low on the calendar when it comes to that performance, uh, but uh, there are other things that we look at, right? So don't worry about it. Uh, let's look at the login more. And mm, we also have something like performance test, end-to-end uh, -end performance test that we run twice a day. And it's end-to-end, -end, right? So the if anything goes bad on the backend, we see it. Uh, so the question is, how bad it could be? First of uh, first thing, this is like performance culture talk. The changes were done in a continuous way. There were no big bank effort uh, efforts to improve the performance. That's a good thing. If you have something like this in your company, maybe that's a good begin beginning. But uh, you know. <coughs> If the hero leaves the company, there will no longer be any improvements on the uh, performance, right? No one is going to care about it. So avoid this, avoid this. Do it if you have to, but <clears throat> in general, try to uh, set some processes. But as, as, as an experiment, I reverted all optimizations that we've done just to see how it would look, right? Uh, so for a very simple screen, which is a login, we have a <coughs> big splash um, image. There's a simple form, of course, validation as well. Uh, our performance score is 76. Not great, not terrible, uh, if you watch the TV uh, series. Uh, but what is important here is <coughs> first contentful paint happens on 1.7 seconds, time to interactive, two seconds. That's, I think, is a good testimonial to Amber itself. 300 milliseconds, we are done with rendering all the stuff, so that's good. Uh, but it looks, this is a red, it is on red, it looks like we, lo we wait a lot for parsing JS. Something is happening there, obviously, before we start render. And there is a blocking time. Blocking time basically means that <clears throat> the, main the main thread is occupied with rendering your code. Uh, <laughs> so uh, users can't really interact with the page. 
for 200 milliseconds, it's already noticeable. If it would be like less than 70, 80 milliseconds, you won't notice. But 200, yeah, maybe, especially on a slower computer. Uh, and that will only get worse because this is like a, it's actually not a classical um, Ember app, but Embroider is already there, but it's switched off in a way. No optimizations were done. So, okay, let's go through the reports. This is also an important part of that performance culture. If the developers want to check, okay, uh, the score is really pretty bad. Let's see uh, what's happening. So we have access to the report, Lighthouse report with every change. <clears throat> and here we already see a huge opportunity to remove unused um, JavaScript. And what we have seen before, like this first contentful paint, now it makes sense. The result of JavaScript that we actually don't use, but we parse. Uh, we can also check the tree map. And with every tool, you know, use your brain first. Uh, because it might be uh, might be kind of false positive or or something like that. We see for sure that for that login page, if you look here, there's tiny MCE, uh, not so tiny. It seems so. Uh, <laughs> it's it's unused. Uh, the whole thing is in a pattern. Maybe you see that. So the whole package is unused. But we also see translations JS. So all the translations are bundled, and it seems like they are used. But that's not true. We, you only display one language at the time, right? So this is not entirely true, but it already shows us that we ship like almost six megabytes. Uh, we have duplicated models, uh, modules, 120 kilobytes, and unused 4.7 megabytes. So quite a lot, something to start with. So to establish that performance culture, I would say tools, tools, tools. You have to use Lighthouse, for example, so you will have these badges. Uh, now we have opportunity to access the mm, Webpack community or the tooling that is there. If you look at this uh, bundling mm, chart, let's say, this chart has a special name, but I forgot how it's called. Uh, but something you may look, it's similar here. The name of the chunk is, we clearly use Embroider, because the chunk <coughs> name we, we modified. And, but you can see that this big one looks a bit like a vendor and the smaller one, still big, looks like a mm, application. We have components there. Here are templates. So yeah, we, we did nothing so far. Uh, I see that I didn't remove all the optimizations. There is a small chunk there still, uh, but yeah, in general, we have two chunks. And uh, the third tool, and very important, is uh, size limit report that we can uh, install as a GitHub action, for example. And um, in our case, app.js is actually two files, so we are grouping them, and we have some grouping on on-demand JS. These are the chunks that we load later. Uh, so this looks like more or less like this. And uh, this is a funny change, actually, very small. The only impact that we already uh, that we have here is on demand JS actually, and that is that is a feature that generate I, will, I believe is going to generate a lot of revenue for the clients. So not every change has to be huge. So whenever you optimize your code by I don't know one percent, be happy about it, you know, because sometimes you will deliver features. This one costs us zero point zero three percent up in on demand. It's going to be a good one. So let's optimize it. Uh, first, let me introduce you to Embroider. Uh, we'll look at uh, five, five uh, configurations at first. Uh, at you are probably familiar with that, so you can skip this slide. Uh, <laughs> we were quite lucky because we battled Embroider from the day one uh, when we started like a new app. Uh, I just wanted to fail fast if if the ecosystem is not going to. Uh, catch up with Embroider, we'll see it early and we'll fail early. Yeah, So uh, we're quite, quite lucky in the one PR, we were able to uh, accomplish all this uh, static um, analysis, I would say, that will help us uh, with, yeah, with static analysis. So um, that change, of course, there were some changes. It wasn't like we switched it on and voila, it works. We had, uh, uh, we had to change some code. 
but still it wasn't drastic. You, you could fit it in the one PR <clears throat> and people would still review it with a caution, yeah? Not like, oh, okay, looks like it should work. <laughs> yeah, you know the drill. Um, so uh, here, just by applying these changes, uh, our bundle went uh, down by the 2.6 percent to seven, maybe. So that's a that's a good one. Second, and the most important, I guess, the most important thing is splitting at roads. Uh, this is the main dish, you know. This is what we were waiting for. So uh, of course, uh, router has to know about uh, some stuff. So install the embroider router. Replace your regular router with uh, embroider's router and at split at roads. So uh, you have to define roads where you would like to split. In our case, this accounts account is more like a session. So then we have modules, appointments, clients, clients, marketing, some stuff. Uh, so you just specify uh, these uh, roads. And voila, what a change. Minus 25% already. Uh, on demand, of course, went went up in relative values a lot, of course, because it was very small before. But yeah, the main bundles that we ship everywhere went down by 25%. So that's a huge win. You won't see that change uh, often. So the question is to split or not to split on all roads? That's a, that's a valid question. And in our case, splitting on all roads uh, generated 115 chunks and on <clears throat> manually picked. There were more that I fitted there on the on the slide, but there were like there are like 39 chunks on manually picked roles. You can use uh, a, an expression, so you don't have to type them all. That's going to work. But to split or not to split, in my opinion, not split on all uh, roads. Look, only 3.5 percent. You know these changes were done in. Um, different times, so look more on, on relative uh, values than on the size of the main bundle. Uh, but the on-demand went really, really up. Why is that? So on manually picked uh, roads, it looked like this. Uh, we have here, especially here, we have a lot of on-demand um, chunks that we load when you access some road. But for all roads, look how many of them are here. And all of them have some, mm, let's say, overhead or something like that. Uh, so I don't think it's a, it's a great idea. The, in my opinion, it's uh, splitting at roads is a uh, habit of science and art. We want to have many chunks, of course, uh, and the main as lean as possible. But too many chunks, hmm, I don't know. In my opinion, it's not the best idea. Uh, and you might see some... Mm, so it's some delays between when you go from page to page. But let's let's go to another topic. Make sure you load your heavy dependencies. Uh, you lazy load your heavy dependencies. So again, our beloved tiny MC, not so tiny as I said. This is rich text editor. Uh, it's in the bundle. You know, uh, we ship it on the login page uh, without any reason. And uh, at the time we were adding it. <coughs> A lighthouse reported, uh, you know, a lighthouse basically stopped us from merging it, because at the time I think we have a we had a like the goal of 80 points on performance for that screen, and it dropped to 76. So lighthouse said no, you can't merge it, and that's how you actually spread that uh, culture across the team. It's automated, right? So we had to figure out something, and the way to deal with it is dynamic imports. So in, let's say, you import things like this these days, and uh, this is imported on a module, let's say, module level, and uh, we introduce a handy function for us uh, because we have two instances, basically, of TinyMC that does different things. Uh, they do different things. But yeah, this is one of the examples you could load it. The most important thing is that await import, it's a... Uh, I think stage three uh, in the specification. So you should use something like this. And we load it on, let's say, on, on the start of the component uh, by, by using use task. Probably after Aaron's yesterday talk, I will change it to modifier or whatever. I will go through that talk again. <laughs> we'll see. But that works. 
you know, that works. Uh, and that delays uh, the uh, importing of TinyMC uh, until we need it, until we need that UI editor component. And don't be afraid, of course, that uh, I've put this component here and there. Is it going to load once again? No, it's a, it's a job for a browser. It, it won't generate another fetch for the resource. So you don't have to care about it. You should definitely check Ember Auto Import if you would like to know more about uh, that import thing. And this was a huge change. <clears throat> Again, uh, yeah, what I have to say here is that first time we were able to catch that issue on Lighthouse, but the other day we somehow managed to merge TinyMC because the performance dropped to, I don't know, 81 or something like that. It was still in a goal because we already had different improvements and we didn't put the bar higher. So always put the bar, bar higher once you are there. So once, uh, once we had to make a proper dynamic import of TinyMC and we went back on the good tracks, minus 27%, uh, huge, huge improvement. So my uh, advice would be, you have to analyze the bundles. And sometimes you will see something as I, was, I would say again, use your brain. Uh, <laughs> because with TinyMC, we have seen that what, that was like a big one, right? Now it's on, on demand, fine. But look at this. Here we have utils. What would you expect from utils? Some small functions, right? Shouldn't be that big. We have GraphQL.js, some utils there. What is so big there? It's a concatenated module. So something is wrong there. Uh, it doesn't tell us what is wrong, but something is obviously wrong. <coughs> and in this case, uh, we use GraphQL. So we have a, a schema in our in project, which we use for Miras and for IDE to help us with uh, writing queries. Uh, it's, it's a good source for IDE to, to help us write code. So by removing schema from the main uh, bundle we did it by mistake again uh, importing some little stuff from uh, from schema and yeah then utils went down i don't see it here ah it's it's there so it's it's a very small as as expected and that gave us again minus 4.5 um, percent in size uh, sometimes look for a specific plugin like for uh, like for moment we are on a, a few markets, but not on the, you know, not around the world. So we don't need all the locales. And the uh, package like Moment, it can't. Uh, t uh, there's no way it will know that uh, you only need these locales. You are not dynamically loading them; they are in the package itself. So you somehow have to tell it. Fortunately, there is a, a plugin for that web webpack, webpack plugin, and. Here are the locales in the moment. Uh, JS. It's also a wider question why you need moment these days. Yeah, maybe maybe you should use something different. We'll see. But uh, yeah, we have these locales, and that was at the time that was also again a huge change. So look into that as well. Minus nine percent just by uh, <clears throat> using uh, this plugin. It was very easy to use it actually. Just install it put this in the in the config and voila. And sometimes you just don't know that you are making a mistake. So we use it, we, we use something like Ember SVG jar. A great uh, thing for icons. You know, you put icons, uh, you use icons through this and it bundles them into JS file and then uh, it inlines the SVGs in the markup. So you can style them. You know, icon can be Bigger, smaller, different colors, very useful thing. But because of the uh, naming of the component, it was called like UI SVG or something like that. That led to uh, wrong thinking that you should always use it for every, mm, you know, every SVG. So we've put some bigger things that are actually not icons. And this is funny, but, uh, you know, minus 5% on that because we had our component wrongly named. Uh, but if you don't use Embroider, uh, you can start with just removing some, for example, some translations. So I think it was Simplabs that did it, or main matter these days. 
uh, only 88, uh, 88 uh, translations were removed across a few languages. And already we are 1% down with our bundle. So also a good, good stuff. And this is also something cool. Uh, <clears throat> We upgraded to, at some point, of course, we upgraded to Ember 4. And I always knew that on major versions, we, that they, they remove some stuff because there are deprecations, the API was going to be removed, but you, you don't usually feel uh, if the package is the slimmer or not. So we have a evidence, I don't know, core team can use it in some presentation, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> that this uh, make our vendor JS uh, 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 again leaner just by upgrading. Um, so, and that again uh, was uh, seen by, um, by Lighthouse. At that time, our performance score jumped for the login page 84 to 89. It was nice improvement. And I guess Barint was working on that. A lot of changes I see, but probably it wasn't that hard. For sure not for Balint. Uh Sometimes you will be surprised we updated Tailwind and our CSS went down as well. I guess this is because we were using Purge CSS. Now we use just in time uh, compiler. And again, it, it, it gives, gave us some mm, improvements, but without size limit report or something like that, you wouldn't know actually. So I'm not telling you that you should use Tailwind and update it, but you should uh, use size limit report, for example. And yeah, there were a couple of slides about these bundles, right? And you can, you may think, okay, why you are so obsessed with uh, bundle sites? So there is no linear uh, correlation, I think, between um, how strong your device is and how fast it uh, parse and analyze uh, run JS. So on a very slow devices, like here, some page, it was CNN, I guess. yeah, it was CNN. It was loading for quite a lot of time. And on iPhone, probably the phones that developers have, uh, it was like fine, you know? <laughs> the, this, the, the page worked fine. What do you want? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> well, it works for me. Um, so yeah, on, uh, it, it, the cost could be pretty high uh, on that JS, uh, so... Mm, what I'm also trying to sell it to you is that uh, it opens some doors. If you have seen that we are not changing the um, the technology, but we also want to be on a different platforms, just to be there, we have to load fast. So it's an enabler in a way. Uh, so yeah, let's see what uh, what we've got. Uh, we've jumped to 95 by making these uh, changes, which I think is pretty nice. We don't have a uh, blocking time, uh, 40 milliseconds. No one is going to notice that. Uh, we still see that first contentful paint is one second. Still, Amber is doing good job. 300 milliseconds, I think, time to interactive. Uh, it's rendering same. It's still fast, in my opinion. But still some work, th there is still some work to do. That might be also <clears throat> the thing that we choose to work with. You know, we are working uh, on a single page application. So there are some scripts that you have to ship to the client. It has to be analyzed. So, yeah, but it's already pretty, pretty good. And like with these translations, uh, because we have some opportunities in reduce unused JavaScript, um, you know, we will probably lazy load that uh, translations, for example, and it's going to make the score even better. But there are things that we want uh, be able to address, like eliminate uh, render blocking resources. On that login page, this is this big splash uh, image. Uh, do not try lazy load that image because it's already in a viewport. It's actually even worse if you try to lazy load it. You should give a hint to a browser that you will render that image, okay? So for single page application, until we analyze all the scripts, the browser doesn't know that we will put an image there. So it takes one second, let's say, for analyzing, and it will know, it won't know. So we have to add a special, uh, um, uh, how is it called, tag to, uh, <coughs> to the head of HTML to let browser know, to give it a hint that will load that image. So <coughs> without SSR, 
we won't actually uh, address this problem. Okay. I wasn't checking the time, but uh, I have some other video as well. It's not exact comparison of uh, of what we've got and with removal of all these uh, improvements, but for internal presentation, I did some comparison between old app that we had that now we embed uh, in, in in web. Uh, they both had the same screen uh, that you that we use when they land from Facebook on our page. Uh, so it's a login first, and uh, under these conditions, it's a cold load, no cache, no you know they they approach this page for the first time. It's 3G, uh, so maybe I don't know they are in Metro or whatever. <coughs> These are not, not a good conditions. And keep in mind that the Google page, I don't have a video for that, sorry, but the Google with single input, it was loading like for three or three and a half seconds. And Facebook login, it was like four seconds. And there are, of course, huge companies. They have a lot of resources to optimize that. Uh, and in our case, <clears throat> on the left, we have pre embroider app. Uh, and on the right, we have uh, that our new app. So in more or less six, six seconds, for a very quite bad conditions, we are there. But before embroider, when we had to load everything, it's still loading. It's a single page application, right? So you've probably seen that, or maybe you <laughs> you were ignoring it. Uh, there was a different branding back then, but uh, we can see it can make a difference for sure. What I'm going to say you at the end is that it's a continuous effort so just start and uh, this was actually our f this is was uh, this was the time when we introduced uh, the size limit report at first we were just observing uh, looking what was the impact of our changes it was pr 31st and now our uh, <coughs> bundle size is smaller for that core experience and still we have plenty uh, of things to do and we will improve this this for sure I, i'm sure but look it's a 1300 prs later how many changes you can fit into that quite a lot right a lot of features a lot of new dependencies and still we are in a better position than we were at the beginning right so continuous effort uh, and uh, this is a uh, from from that experiment that I did when I reverted all the changes, uh, the the size limit report showed me this. So we were shipping 1.2 megabytes. This is gzipped, by the way. Uh, so quite a lot of JS to ship. Uh, I didn't uh, downgrade Amber, so probably it could be even uh, higher. And yeah, I think that's it. So till the next time, Embranias. Thank you.